F. We've got some kind of Google problem here that has utterly ruined the start of the show. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. It tells me I'm live. What we're going to do is we're going to stop the intro music that I had. Look what I, I'm glad you guys can see what I'm actually dealing with as it goes live here. People always want to claim that it's my irresponsibility or my lack of talent or something. You want to see how much talent I have? I have enough talent that I can cover for the fact that the entire show crashed around me due to no fault of my own. This is Sam I.B. of The Correct Views. As Google Hangout allows my internet to utterly fail, I don't even know if I'm actually live. It says I am. I don't know if I actually believe it, but I'm going to go ahead and shut this down and see what happens you're listening to the correct views and whether or not google likes it or not i'm going to give you the correct views hello high deaf people you are there low deaf people you are there which means if you're seeing what i love fact cam if you're seeing what i'm seeing you've seen that the entire show has crashed around me and the fault of which lies solely in the hands of google all right friends moving on i told you i could recover fast i'm like that Turkey responsible for flood of illegal immigrants in Europe. Christelle, the Zoom cam there, proving my innocence. You gotta love it. Kurt Nemo, Prison Planet. Turkey responsible for flood of illegal immigrants in Europe. Now, you see, this doesn't surprise me greatly. I need a mouse if you go down. It doesn't surprise me greatly because we've been behind Saudi Arabia. And we already know what Saudi Arabia does. Saudi Arabia is responsible in part for 9-11, among other things. Saudi Arabia is our friend because Saudi Arabia has money. Saudi Arabia is not our friend for any other reason. And I guarantee it's uh, it's mutual. (sighs) Wild Donomsky, a popular television news program in Poland, claims that Turkey... American ally Turkey is behind the mass migration of illegal immigrants into Europe. Faced with social and economic problems created by the presence of more than 2 million Syrian refugees in the country, Turkey planned and financed the mass migration according to the uh, Weodomoshki website. I don't know how you say that. It's W-I-A-D-O-M-O-S-C-I. Be my guest. Turkey is supplying the migrants with the necessary means for the long journey toward the dream of Europe, Thomas Altkowski writes. The president of Turkey, it goes on, Recep Tayyip Endogran, used the tragic death of the little Alyan. Of course, that was the uh, the little boy that unfortunately died in the um, in the attempt to get uh, to the uh, to Europe. They used his death as a pretext for cynical statements about how the West, the European Union, is responsible for the transformation of the Mediterranean into a graveyard of refugees. The corporate media has used a photo of a drowned Syrian child, Alyan, washed up on the beach near the Aegean resort town Bodrum to highlight the refugee crisis for humanitarian aid. Now, as many of you know, according to the uh, beginning of this site, I said I was going to talk about uh, the Pop Will Eat Itself show, and it all ties together. For those of you that don't know, my band Passing Time was lucky enough to have gotten to open for Pop Will Eat Itself. I have no idea where Serenity is. She said she was going to be here for this, and she has vanished. But we got to open for Pop Will Eat Itself, and they are a very leftist-leaning band, as it were. And um, when we talked about, I got to go backstage and BS with them. When I got to talk to them, they talked about being a Bernie Sanders fan. And there's Serenity. Serenity, who did you pen in for president? Uh, Say it into the mic. You're going to have to, like, lean forward. It's fine. We have Serenity of Passing Time in the house tonight. What's the question? Uh, Who did you pen in? Did you tell, well, you you told Pop Relita Self because you did. Who did you pen in for president? I penned in Ron Paul. Now, see, there in Ohio, it doesn't count. She's still pending it. The reason I mention this is because Pop Will Eat Itself is a very left, kind of like the Clash leaning band. And uh, the th- thank you for the mouse. The uh, Christelle. The thing with um, Pop Will Eat Itself is they're, they're very left, like the Clash or perhaps maybe 
the Sex Pistols, although you never want to put words in Johnny Rotten's mouth because you could be wrong. Um, my suspicions is that he's highly left. Um, the trouble with the left is it tends to lead to socialism. Well, an interesting thing to note here, and this ties together with my earlier story, so don't zoom out. Don't zone out. It all ties together here. They are, uh, for the most part, Bernie Sanders fans. Now, I'm not a Bernie Sanders. Saunders. I'm not a Bernie Sanders fan myself, but I understand how the left, who are politically honest to themselves, could go to Bernie Sanders. The same way that people like me, who are more constitutionally, not necessarily socially conservative, tend to lean towards the side of a person like Gary Johnson. The left is not going to Hillary, and the right is not going to Jeb. Well, this matters, because when you look at issues like this, you can see that Turkey is someone who is aligned to both major sides of the left and right in this country. I guarantee you'll see more problems like this from Turkey under Jeb Bush or um, Mark Rubio. I guarantee you'll see this kind of problems under Hillary Clinton. So this is why you're seeing an exodus away from the uh, quote-unquote normal way of thinking of things because of the way that both parties have sold us out to an ideology that has made it to quote Pop Willie itself when I talked to them. He said the Middle East is quote-unquote an absolute mess, and it is. And neither major political party has a way to fix this. Now... That's why you're seeing Sanders. That's why you're seeing Trump, whether you like him or not. Um, to be fair, I like Trump. Pop will eat itself. Do not. Um, got to talk to them about that. Um, whether it's Trump, whether it's Gary Johnson, regardless of who it is. Oh, hey, yum. Regardless of who it is, it's important to note People are getting sick of the establishment. And this is why, because the establishment has people like Turkey represented as someone to whom we should be allied with. In addition to cleaning, listen to the word cleaning. If you come to ethnically cleanse me, when they come to ethnically cleanse me, where you stand up, where you defend me, pop will leave itself. In addition to cleansing refugee camps in Turkey, Ryadomsky claims the government has turned a blind eye to the activities of organized gangs of smugglers who assist the effort to move thousands of migrants by sea to the Greek islands of Lesbos, Kos, and Samos, where they travel on to Europe. Now listen, friends, and what I'm reading to you, you're seeing on the screen for those of you that want to question my sources. Um... My point being, you're, you're dealing with something here that neither the left nor the, nor the right is in favor of. And again, I can talk about people. Uh, like, uh, again, I'm using the band as an analogy because I'm awful hyped to have played with them. Uh, someone of a different political ideology can see the way the left and right are both parts of the same problem. They're just the left and right, the conservative liberal, the do, the don't. Um of the same problem. Their solutions lead to the same problems with hurt people like me, which hurt immigrants, which is the reason that this whole migrant situation is even happening. The relationship between Turkey and Greece has remained hostile since Greece won its independence from the Ottoman Empire in 1821. And again, um, we all know that Turkey in many ways is not is not necessarily a friend of freedom. That doesn't mean we need to go over and remove their leaders, God forbid. But Turkey has been a problem to this almost as much as Saudi Arabia. Nobody could possibly be a problem for this in the way that the Saudi Arabia has been. And I guarantee any left-minded person that reads the news and hates me agrees with me on that. We just agree. Saudi Arabia has been a massive problem for the world. Well, why don't we look at what Turkey is doing? And I'm not saying we need to attack them, but we might need to uh, reevaluate re whether or not we want to continue working with them in the way that we currently do. 
Why? Look at this. EU works with Ankara to keep migrants in Turkey. European leaders are currently working with Turkey in a behind-the-scenes push to improve conditions for the 2.2 million Syrian refugees living in Turkey. Yeah, get rid of them, throw them to other countries. The issue will be addressed during an emergency meeting of the EU bureaucrats on Wednesday. So, what we're looking at here is Turkey being a country like Saudi Arabia, somebody that your tax dollars, you listening to this, that's why I'm talking about this, you listening to this, your tax dollars are leading to this. So, I mean, I think you should know. And if you want to do something about it, then call your representative. Otherwise, just ignore me. It's fine. It's your God-given First Amendment. CNSnews.com, post-Obamacare. $115,470,000 on government insurance. $32,968,000 still uninsured. Now, how many of you agree, as I do, that if you don't have your credibility, then you have nothing? I, as your humble host, am going to go ahead and be real. I make somewhere in the ballpark of 20-ish thousand a year, not under 20, never over 25. I work for tips. Um, it can be less, but it's not more. Um, I have wonderful insurance. Now, my wife works too, Christelle, the behind-the-scenes queen. She works too. She doesn't make as much as I do. She makes a little less. Not a lot less, a little less. We can pretty much live the lifestyle that we hope to live. I have two properties that aren't yet returning money to me, but will be by this time next year. Um, I don't have a lot of money. I really don't, but I don't need a lot of money. I had wonderful insurance. I cut a uh, high def. A low def you can try. I know it's my middle finger. <laughs> He's slipping me off. Uh, low def. High def. If you look, high def can see it. The tip of this finger was, in fact, cut off. Uh, an aquarium broke, and I went to lift it, and it... Uh, if you can imagine a peach, take a spoon and cut the peach. Like slice it under. Now leave a little bit hanging. That's what the meat hanging on my finger was like. And now that half of my listenership is vomiting, finish. Ah, you got more than that. Keep going. Okay, welcome back. Now that you have puked, um, and those of you that love horror movies are like, yeah, truth is it kind of sucked. Um, they sewed it back on, and guess what? I paid for it. With my insurance, I could afford my deductible, got the tip of my finger sewed back on, as you can see by the tattoo, and from my opening for Pop Will Eat Itself last night's story, um, I play the keyboards like a mofo. I really do. And insurance. I paid for it. It covered it. I was happy. I got vertigo. It sucked. It was terrible. I thought I had a stroke. I thought I had a brain tumor. I thought I was going to die. Um, vertigo. No one knows what causes it. Thankfully, it wasn't a head injury. No one knows what causes it. No one knows what brings it back. Might it ever happen again? It might. They don't know because they don't know what caused it, but I got it. And I took a week off work while I recovered from it. It was terrible. And guess what? It went away. I can ride roller coasters. I can go on mosh pits. I can be in strobe lights. Whatever. I'm fine. Um, I could pay for it. Now, if it was to happen, I don't know if I could or not. Since Obamacare and it has hit Ohio, I don't know if I could pay for it or not. It has been an absolute freaking nightmare. For people of, we talk about uh, uh, middle America. I, I gave you, I told you what I made. I was as real as I can be with you. I am not lying to anybody out here. My insurance now is terrible. I had great insurance that I could afford when something hit me. Now, granted, if something terrible hit me, I would not have been able to afford it. And I'm still not. So Obamacare didn't help my current situation anyway. If I was to get something terrible, I wouldn't have been able to afford it no matter what. What I'm doing now is paying more for less insurance. And if something like the tip of my finger gets cut off, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Because I won't be able to afford it now. Because my premiums are through the roof. Well, listen to this. 
I'm not the only one telling stories like this. Despite the onset of the... If you could have heard my intro song, you would have known what mood I was in. But thank you, Google. Despite the onset of the Affordable Care Act's health insurance mandate, insurance buying subsidies and expanded Medicaid eligibility, 32,668,000 people in the United States did not have health insurance at any time in 2004, according to data. Do you want to know why that is? It's because it was ruined for them in stories that probably are really close to mine. Meanwhile, 115,470,000 were on government health insurance at some time during the year. Do you understand what this is saying, friends? In other words, it has increased the responsibility of people like me. Oh, I'm so rich. Hey, Charles Ward, you know who you are. Bite me. Yeah. You take someone like me and you charge them more for less and you make people like me who can barely afford their own insurance pay for other people's insurance and now what you've ended up is less people insured but what the article doesn't, doesn't say well are there are people like me that have worse insurance for more money. So I get less coverage for more money, and the poor people still aren't being helped. The poor people are in a worse situation than they were before I was helping them. Thank you, Obama, for the stupidest idea of all of social justice history. And don't tell me I don't understand what it was like to be poor. I have been through bankruptcy. I used to support myself as a telemarketer. Do you need to hear any more than that? I went to school. I learned how to program a light board, and now I'm a DJ. And I'm not rich because I told you what I make. Do I have a good life? I have a great life. But government is taking so much of it away that even though I'm happy with what I'm making now, if this keeps up, they're going to ruin it. They're going to ruin it. So that somebody that makes like $22,000 a year and is happy with it, I'm willing to, I'm cool. They're going to even ruin that. And I'm sorry, that's not okay with me. John Rappaport, who I've had issue with in the past, but he's right about this. Psychiatrist drugging children for social justice. It's the latest thing, he writes. Psychiatrists are giving children in poor neighborhoods Adderall. What is Adderall? I think legal cocaine. It's a dangerous stimulant by making false diagnoses of ADHD or no diagnosis at all. And their aim is to promote social justice to improve academic performance in school. Basically, what the psychiatric community is doing is giving children the legal synthetic version of cocaine and when it makes them study better they are saying that it helped them now let me tell you something in case you're wondering I'm gonna be even more real have I ever done cocaine yes I did I did it once and I'll tell you why it was only once, and you'll believe me in a minute. I was at a I don't, I don't want I do don't want to bust my friends. It's live, live non teleprompter as I watch how I word this. Christelle is cringing in the corner. Luckily, I didn't even know her at the time. Um, I was at a party where a very big event was coming to a close. And the person who had been in charge of making it a big event had been doing cocaine for about 10 hours. Now, I, as I sit here right now, I'm 42. At the time, I was 28. Um, and I never did it again. I'm dead serious. Never up the nose ever again. Nope. Um, I thought to myself, all right. If you're gonna, and to anybody listening, this is this is where I this is where I'm, I'm gonna lose all my sponsors. If anybody listening, don't do cocaine. But if you are gonna do cocaine, at least be smart enough to do it the way that I did. Um, he'd been on it all night, 
three or four of his friends had been on it all night, and they were having a wonderful time. That said to me that it wasn't poison. Now, granted, this isn't health food, but it's not poison. You're, I'm probably not going to die if I do it tonight, so I, I did it. I then spent the next 45 minutes in a room full of my friends who I didn't want to talk to. Nope. Don't want to. Nope. Because I feel like you want to kill me. Now, I didn't act like that because I was smart enough to realize it was the drug talking. But I avoided some of my lifelong friends due to the way Coke made me feel. It was terrible. I'll never do it again. And I've never done it again. However, if you had given me a pen and a paper and asked me to write you a book, I, you, you probably would have had the outline of a very good short story because I am, in fact, a very good writer. Um, I, it would have been great. Now, what if I did that all the time? You think that's a good idea? You think it might have some long-term problems? If the kid is focusing more, after you give him Adderall, which is, in fact, synthetic cocaine, even though he's doing better in the short term, don't you think it might have some problems? What if Adderall, and I've done Adderall before. Uh, I, I, I'm not even, I, I told you I was going to be honest. Am I prescribed it? No. But I do believe that certain substances are there for a reason, and I've said publicly that when my mom died and my dad died, I took Xanax, for instance. There have been times in my life when I tried Adderall. Why? Because I had to attend a funeral once that was a state away, and I'd been up for three days and didn't want to disrespect the people to whom I was going to. So I took an Adderall. Um, instances like that. Randomly, How many have I taken in my life? I may run for office someday. I can be real. I don't know. Under 30 in my whole life. Ever. I'm, I No, I take that back. Under, under 25. Ever. Maybe under 20. I'd be willing to guess. Somewhere around 20. And really not very often. My point being, you don't give this kind of things to children. Now, if I decide, hey... I need to go to work, I need to do a show, I need to talk to the fans afterwards, I need to drive to Pittsburgh, I need to attend a funeral, I need to speak at the funeral, I need to drive home. If I decide to take an Adderall to do that, that is up to me. But when you give it to a kid, and you give it to him every day, what's that do to his body? What's that do to his liver? Maybe I'll run for th something someday and somebody will want to use this video against me. That's just fine, but make sure you use the rest of it against me too. When I said that that's a terrible idea, when I said that that might be okay if you're, if you're 35 years old and you do that once, it is not okay when you are 13 and you're doing it every day. You are destroying your body. You are shutting your body down. And you are doing a great injustice to yourself. And when people create, when people say, why would God allow you to create such a thing? Well, you know what? Xanax really helped me when my mom died. You want to know what I didn't take today? Xanax. You want to know what I haven't taken since my mom died and I took it three times in a week? Xanax. Why? Because Xanax and any other drug like that is terrible for your mind. Things are created to be used sometimes when needed. When life overwhelms a person. But if you are on these things every day or every month or whatever, if you're taking this all the time, you are hurting your body. 
you're hurting your body. Don't say, well, Sam just admitted he used it. Sam is not using it. Sam did not use it the way that I'm talking about it now. I don't care if you're 13. You're 13, you say, I don't have any say over my life. You know what? No, 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 no. I don't care if you are 13. Stand up against the adults. This is hurting you. This is bad. And if you are an adult and you're doing this and you're listening to me, I'm a dead serious. You're hurting yourself, okay? Oh, I've had 20 Adderall in my life. Guess what? That didn't hurt me a bit. It probably wasn't a real genius idea, but it didn't hurt me. I'm telling you, it's bad. Bad. It's very bad. And that's why I'm out here today on the real show, as it were. Friends, I've got three stories left. You're listening to The Correct Views. I Check me out on Tumblr. Nobody's on Tumblr, as you can see, but <laughs> nobody there. Uh, Tumblr, go ahead. Check me out on Tumblr. Also, look up the works of Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. He is an amazing writer. You can find him on Facebook. Absolutely amazing works there. All right, friends, check this out. CBS News, the surging ranks of America's ultra poor. This is by Amy Peachy of Money Watch. I need a drink. I'm dying of thirst. Hold on. By one dismal measure, America is joining the likes of third world countries. That would be poor Africa for you Kesha fans. The number of U.S. residents who are struggling to survive on just $2 a day has more than doubled since 1996, placing 1.5 million households and 3 million children in this desperate economic situation. And that's according to $2 a day living on almost nothing in America, which is a book by Houghton Mifflin Howard. Let's see, friends. I, this is where you're glad you tuned in because I've I've lived like this. I worked for uh, Fred Nero, and I, I swear if, if if evil ever truly existed, it, it might just be named Fred Nero. He's a terrible person. Um, I used to drive cab for him, and almost all the money that you made went right back to him. Of course, that's the way pyramid schemes work. And uh, it would be like $8 an hour, plus you bought your own gas. And if you didn't get a trip, well, you just kept paying. And in, all, in Ohio, that was very common during the um, early 2000s and late 90s. And you end up in situations where you can't afford anything. I, there were day, there, sometimes I couldn't afford to eat. I was drinking two liters like a crazy, well, like Cristal, because that's all Cristal ever drinks is uh, extra sweet tea and pop because she's trying to die. She, I guess she secretly hates herself. I don't know. But it, it, it's, I did that every day, and I couldn't afford to do anything else. It was terrible. And living on almost no money at all, like $2 a day, is exactly what it was like. It was pure hell. And it's getting worse. There's more and more and more people coming up like this all the time. Well, how did I get out of it? I'm lucky. As listeners of this show just saw, I can have an entire intro crash around me and I can immediately cover for it without missing much of a beat at all. Why? Because it's something I was lucky enough to do. So now I'm a DJ. What happens when the economy crashes and they don't need DJs as much? Because it's coming. I believe it's coming. Think about it, friends. Think about it. I'm trying to tell you that there's more and more people living like this, happening all around you. It goes on, the measure of poverty isn't arbitrary, which is a better way of saying what I just took five minutes to say. It's the threshold of World Bank and what they use to measure global poverty in the developed world. While it may be the norm to see families in developing countries such as Bangladesh or Ethiopia struggle to survive on such meager income, the growing ranks of America's ultra-poor may be shocking given that the U.S. is considered one of the most developed capitalist countries in the world. It says many of us, would say that we would have trouble understanding how families in the country as rich as ours could live on so little, said Arthur Catherine Eden, who spoke on the conference call to discuss the book. 
which she wrote with Luke Schaefer. It says, Eden is the Bloomberg Distinguished Professor of Sociology at John Hopkins. I don't care if he's the Easter Bunny. The point is, what we're seeing here is a growing, growing number of poor. What else are we seeing? We're seeing economies crash in other countries. We're seeing Greece being destroyed by what's the European Union. And why does that matter? Because they want to create a North American Union here, which is going to do the same kinds of things to us. That's why it matters. And there's more and more people trying to make it on just $2 a day. And it gets worse and worse and worse. It says, aside from the lack of knowledge about the program, which helps the poor, it's called TANF. If you're one of those poor, please look up TANF. They often put off applying for aid, and uh, sometimes it can help them get enough to get the rent paid. And there's programs out there. Again, I do want to promote that for those that need it, TANF. Look it up. My point is there's more and more people needing these kinds of things. And I'm not going to go gloating about the fact that I'm lucky enough to be able to enjoy things. Because when this crash hits, I think I'm going to be one of the people in a lot of trouble because I'm an entertainer. Okay, It might surprise you to know that I get ver I ain't no money at all from doing this show. It actually costs me money. But I'm, I'm an entertainer. I'm a musician. I'm a DJ. It's how I make my money. Things could be really bad for me really fast if... Uh, things get much worse in this country and people quit spending money. Um, this is NYPD Union President Patrick Lynch. Quote, only police are qualified to judge the actions of police. I think it's kind of interesting that when um, Mrs. Timothy Gagner Tector, I think it's interesting that when uh, Nazi Germany was going through the Nuremberg trials, which convicted the Nazis of the atrocities of which they had committed. I think it's interesting to note that the Nazis' argument was only people in the German army were, were, were in justification to judge the German army. Does that mean that everybody in the German army was evil? No. It means that a certain number of people in the German army were evil and they don't think anybody else should be allowed to judge them. Fast forward to 2015. We're not talking about the army, we're talking about the police. A small number of police decide that they want to harm the population. So only, they should only be judged by other police, right? It's, I'm sorry if that analogy pisses you off. Welcome to the correct views, but it is still, in fact, a correct view, and I'll tell you why. I'm not attacking police. Last Christmas, Christelle and I got the brilliant idea to start hanging Christmas lights outside of our window at 3 in the morning. Why? Because as I give you this commentary piece that I'm doing, it's currently 4.38 in the morning. It's when I'm awake. I'm a DJ. I just told you that. Remember? Please try to pay attention. Um, it's a joke. Um, I was putting Christmas lights up, and a cop pulled up outside, flashed his light on me, and immediately asked what I was doing, because it was 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was hanging out the window. I said, I live here, sir, and I put my hands up, and I said, my name is Samuel DeGange. And uh, he goes, why are you hanging out the window? I said, I'm hanging Christmas lights. So he pulled closer to the house smiled and said sorry about that. I said, don't be sorry. Thank you. I'm happy to know that somebody cannot be hanging out my window at 3 in the morning and nobody's going to ask what the hell you're doing there. I'm not against all cops. But I am against this notion that those that do abuse people should be able to get away with it. And I don't care if we're talking about armies or if we're talking about police departments. Just to be clear, I wouldn't want to be ambiguous. As you probably already heard, last week, former tennis star James Blake was blitzed by an NYPD plainclothes officer in front of his hotel, tackled to the ground, and left cuffed there, bruised and cut. The officer in question thought he was brutalizing someone who had committed credit card fraud. In itself, this would be quite a problem as credit card, credit card fraud isn't the kind of crime that typically results in an NYPD beatdown. 
except that James Blake is black. He's also, as it turns out, not even the suspect this officer was supposed to be looking for. He just happened to fit the description. The NYPD has since apologized to him, an apology that one would hope has narrowed the eyes of the defiant chin. But you'll never guess who isn't apologizing. Actually, you probably will, because it's NYPD's Patrolman's Benevolent ha Association President Patrick Lynch who penned a letter to the media covering the story. And uh, says, let's just see how much we can get through this before we stop pretending that we're dealing with the same person, shall we? Great, great article. An open letter to those inclined to jump to conclusions as we've as we all off to a bad start, jumping to conclusions isn't the best description when there is public video of Blake being tackled and the NYPD has already apologized. But uh, on to the meat of the gem, do all, to all armchair judges. If you've ever struggled with someone who is resisting arrest or who pulled a gun or knife on you, then you've approached them by breaking a law then you are not qualified to judge the actions of police officers putting themselves in harm's way for the public good. The author writes, just like that, we're done. I'm embedded the rest of the letter below to post, and now I'm not going to read it, you guys can, in case you want to read the whole thing, but you really probably shouldn't. There isn't much point in continuing to read something built on the premise that rests entirely of a logical fallacy of argument from authority. Now listen, let me pause. There is somebody in my life who loves to think up terrible ideas and then base their entire argument on that terrible idea. And they believe that if they reword this terrible argument enough that you might not realize that it is in fact terrible. And it never works. It just makes me very angry. That's what this bonehead is doing. The very idea, the author writes, that anyone who hasn't arrested an armed resistor ought to be precluded from judging those who have is provably false. After all, there is no test of would-be judges that includes a screening to make sure they've experienced this. That'd be like saying you can't judge a rapist unless you've raped. That was my conjecture. It says, after all, there is no test of would-be judges, and it includes a screening to make sure you've experienced this. After all, they're literally judges. Beyond the courts, the press has long 